Folks, this video is an exercise in killing two birds with one stone. I've promised this year that I'll be visiting every team I manage in non-lead to legend. So that behind me is where Juventus play. One bird. Bird number two, though, if you are watching my current Twitch series, which you should be, twitch.tv slash Delugio, I stream most nights. I'll be streaming tonight. Um, I'm also managing Sporting Lisbon over there. This is the quarterfinal first leg of the Europa League. It's Juventus versus Sporting. I did buy a half and half scarf earlier today in Turin, which, there you go, there's a picture of me now wearing the half and half scarf. I'm not quite mad enough to wear it to the match, but we're now going to head in there to do a football. I'm here with Sheepdog as well, and Sheepdog Hello. has just told me that we're actually killing three birds with one stone because we did record a best thing from Turin video earlier today, which will be out on my vlog channel in the next couple of weeks. So make sure you subscribe over there to see what we got up to in Turin, in addition to buying a half and half scarf, which I've just noticed are also for sale in front of me here from this man buying? who's selling stuff out of his van. But I don't know that they're the official UEFA ones like what we bought, but this isn't quite what I had in mind when I said to go to the club shop. There is a Juventus store over there, I think, which is where we're heading now. But there we've got all manner of merchandise. Many merchandises. Presumably, this is all knockoff stuff. I don't know for sure. And then I guess we've got I guess this is food or something over here. There's some food, some kind of food being cooked and crowds of people trying to have a look at it. There's beer and food. I hear are both popular things with football fans. Beer and sausage there, I think, is what we've got. And then something else the other side of it. So that's the beer and sausage. This is maybe additional sausage. In fact, there's loads of these food places. Like, okay, this is actually quite cool. We've got paninis at a football match. It's just this whole row of road alongside the football ground. We're just walking along the side of the ground and all of this is just different things, selling different kinds of food and loads of people cramming it into their faces. So we did go to the Aventus store in the city centre earlier on today and had a quick look, assuming there'd be a bigger one here. Can't find anyone outside the ground, anyone? can't find one outside the ground. There is one on the other side of this fence. We have to get in first. It doesn't look very big though. So I'm hoping it's gonna have everything in there my heart could desire. Otherwise I'll be very sad. But I think we go through entrance D, which, yeah, how do we? So we're going through here. I th no, that's K. What? You don't know your alphabet. I, I mean, I feel like a fool. Yeah. You were at C and I said, oh, I know my alphabet. <laughs> D will be next. Yeah, we've gone from C to K. This is like my initials in reverse. Where on earth is D, my middle initial? I mean, I feel like I don't, the Italian alphabet has thrown me. Because five A's over there. I mean, goes C, K, five oh, A. I am, I am, yeah, no idea how we get into this stadium. We've just spoken to a guy who's equally as lost as we are trying to find his way to entrance F. It really does go B, C, K. There's nothing in between, but these numbers, you can see on that sign inside, the other side of the fence, that number is in the 200s. The one on our ticket is 18, which leads me to believe we're on completely the wrong side of the stadium. But worryingly, the Juventus store is mentioned on there. So I hope we still get to access a club shop. I don't think I could, don't think I could do a uh, match day vlog without a club shop tour first. That just, just doesn't sit well with me. So we've just established we are completely on the wrong side of the ground. Um, literally the opposite side of the stadium now. If we'd have kept going past K, obviously everyone knows the alphabet goes B, C, K, D, and D is next after K. We're now back around at B again, which does mean we get a nice view all the way around the stadium. Yeah. <laughs> well, almost an hour after arriving, and I would say we've done a lap and a half of the stadium because we went halfway around almost 
to very close to this point before doubling back so we assumed we were wrong and then we walked all the way around the other way but nearly an hour after getting here i can finally see entrance d there's about half an hour before kickoff i don't know if we're going to get into a club shop because it's all the way back that way so we might just have to get in and just do a football second time in two weeks i went to a football match where i can see the alps that's quite cool for someone who lives in England. Well, after a ticket check, passport check, bag check, and turnstile, we are now in, as demonstrated by the uh, large football stadium in front of me. It's very cool, isn't it? I would, as a word of warning for any foreign football fans coming here, I've never before had my passport checked and then my name cross-referenced against the name on the ticket. So they are clearly very hot on making sure the ticket um, changing hands incorrectly. So make sure you come in on your own ticket if you're planning on coming to a match here. We got ours for a football tours website. We arranged all that for us. I would certainly recommend that because that was a kerfuffle. I never would have got into Spurs a couple of weeks ago if they'd have been checking that kind of information. I guess that's as close as I'm getting to a Juventus store inside the stadium. And they don't have the gilet. Um, editor Chris, insert footage from the actual store we went to in the city centre earlier today, where I looked briefly at a gilet here. A gilet? You know I like a gilet. How much is a gilet? 65 euros, less than a shirt. <sighs> Very sad. I said it in Switzerland and I'll say it again here. Any football stadium that does lemon iced tea scores big in my books. This is my favorite drink in the entire universe. Plus it looks a bit like beer, so it looks like I'm a, a big boy. Well, we finally made it in and these seats are pretty good. We've got the sporting fans down there making some noise. And we're right on the edge of the event as fans. It's only a couple of minutes till kickoff. Well, oh, this is snazzy.
was pretty loud and very impressive. Chris, get the team news up over Sheepdog's face now. There's your team news. Lots of faces I recognise on both teams, because remember, I manage Juventus on YouTube, Sporting on Twitch, very exciting. And the Sporting fans have already done a Cambridge. A double Cambridge. Two players have gone off, no goal has gone in. They've dropped one on the floor. I can't believe I get my bag search on the way in and they can bring multiple players in. Here we go then, boys and girls, time to do a football. Juventus have just had the best chance of the game so far. We're about 10 minutes in. They're getting closer. They're looking most likely to score at the moment. Another big chance for Juventus. We're 16 minutes in. It simultaneously feels like it's coming and there's a lot of people getting frustrated around me already this early in the game. The sporting fans are making a decent amount of noise. They're not at the level of those young boys fans from the other week though. They've had a couple of pauses for breath and I didn't experience any pauses for breath in Switzerland. Oh, oh. Possibly the best chance of the game has just gone to Sporting. The good save from Chesney and as part of the counter-attack the Juventus players have been absolutely cluttered. And as you can hear, the fans are not too happy about a very smart professional foul whilst the, whilst the counter-attack hadn't really got going. It's still inside this half and they just took him out. Quite clever defending, really. But very nearly a goal down here. Good save from Chesney. Another good save from Chesney. I tell you what, right now, half an hour into this first half, Sporting have weathered the event as pressure and are looking the most likely to score at the moment. They've got a corner down here in front of us with former football manager Wonder Kid, Marcus Edwards, about to take it. But the Sporting fans who are directly behind where this corner is being taken are getting very excited. They can feel like something is coming. Juventus are like defending desperately here. And it was an overhit cross that uh, Juventus have got away with that a little bit. And now they just need to keep the ball for a few minutes because they're letting Sporting really get back into this game. Goal line clearance now for Juventus. 32 minutes in. It's all sporting for the last five or ten minutes or so. They've got flares going off in there again. I just love the drink into the crowd. Yeah, they're throwing drinks this way now. It's all very pleasant. I'm glad we're so close to them. Wow. Three minutes later, that corner still hasn't been taken. Uh, Chesney's being taken off for Juventus. He was getting treatment for all that time. He's walking off fine. It looks like he was getting treatment to his face or something. I don't know if he's taken a, a head injury or something, but he's being walked up the pitch. Substitute goalkeepers coming on as Juventus need to defend a corner. So like the worst possible time, there's a couple of minutes left in the first half. They're defending a corner and they've got a goalkeeper coming on who won't have warmed up. So alarming. Now you ain't good, sir. Confirmation. We've got another injury stoppage this time for a sporting player. The end of this first half is kind of just petering out. But this lot are having a lovely time. They're just making a, a lot of noise over there. Bunch of rowdy rascals. And it looks like sporting are making a substitution as well. Similar situation, it was like he went down holding his head, he's being helped off, walking off. I wonder if the two of them maybe clashed heads. If they did, I wonder why they didn't go off at the same time rather than having two separate three or four minute stoppages. There we go then, half time, nil nil. As is often the way, they're going to play really loud music for 15 minutes now, so you're not going to hear a word I say. There is brewing trouble over here. There's a whole load of sporting fans starting to press up against the little segregation fence. And there's one guy in here who's sat a couple of rows in front of us. He's just basically constantly stood up goading them. They don't like him, he doesn't like them. They're throwing drinks and all sorts over our way now. And uh, yeah, not feeling uncomfortable yet because there's a big fence in the way, but don't really want to hang around after the match necessarily. Here we go then, second half incoming. 
Sporting doing a weird little warm up. Very much like to see a goal or two in this second half, please. There is uh, definite frustration building in here because Sporting have been the better team again. We're getting on for 10 minutes into the second half. I mean, Juventus have got an attack going now, but Sporting have had the best chance of the half so far. It's almost as if Juventus need my boy Vlaovic to come on and score his gazillion goals. Right, to corner for Juventus, down in front of us. Best attacking spell they've had in the game. Couple of good chances. And now a corner, which I think is the, certainly the first one they've had at this end. I do not know what's just happened. I think someone's just thrown something at the Juventus player who was going to take the corner. And the crowd just absolutely erupted. Not sure what's going on. Ah, uh, for a drink, okay. Yeah, the sporting fans are winding everybody up now. The corner led to nothing. That being said, there's another cross coming in. Another corner. Here comes my boy. Right, finally Juventus playing with a striker. We've got half an hour left. Might actually see some attacking progress now. Even with my boy on the pitch. Juventus are so poor going forward. It's very frustrating to watch. Oh! Finally, a little bit of attacking intent. The ball goes right across the goal. And it's a quick corner in as a result. And it, I mean, it's a bit wasteful. No! Cross comes in! about five minutes there fair play to these sporting fans when they're not throwing drinks at us um, they have kept the noise levels up throughout the entire match couple of little pods they're not quite up there with the Swiss fans from the other week but they are pretty loud celebrated like a goal by the people around me. And there we have it! Full time, 't what we didn't really get to talk about it on the way in I really like the way that we've kind of come in halfway up and very limited walking up and down lots of stairs it's a lovely well-designed ground I'll uh, 
I'll judge in a minute how easy the location and the transport is, depending on how easy we manage to get away from the place. But the actual design of it and everything, seats really comfortable, no leg room issues like I had at Barcelona. And it's just been really easy just to get in and out. Once we found our way in, obviously finding the right turnstiles was a challenge. Still sounds very noisy in there though. I think we're gonna try and leg it and try and find a taxi. We're like 10 miles away from our hotel and it's, <laughs> What, 11 o'clock at night? We could have some fun and games coming up trying to find our way back to the hotel. Oh, boys and girls. Boys and girls, it is not easy to get away from that stadium after a Juventus match. It is 20 past midnight and we've just got back to the hotel. We had so many taxis cancel on us. We missed the one bus that would have got us within a kilometre of our hotel that we could have then walked and thought, don't worry, we'll get the next one. The next one was 52 minutes later. Um, in the end, we'd given up all hope and a taxi that I thought I'd cancelled just turned up and we got in that and we've made it back. But, oh, there must be a better way to do that. But I don't know what it is. Um, the only thing that made me feel better is one of you lovely people who is a sporting fan when I was moaning about this on Twitter, sent me a message saying, well, the away phones are still stuck in the ground. We're all still in here. So at least they've had a worse evening than I have in terms of getting back from the football match. The match itself, lots of fun. Lovely stadium, like I said, on the way out. Um, but the transport links there are absolute bobbins. Um, there is, a, it looks like there's a tram situation around the back, but because the hotel we're staying in, which we booked through the football tour people, uh, the tram we're staying in, they've, they've the hotel we're staying in, they've dug up all the tram lines out the front, so you can't get the tram here. So we only can get buses or taxis, and taxis just weren't going out to the football ground, and like I say, we missed the bus. So, grrr. But lots of fun, all the same, but I need to sleep now. I am not. Anyone who watches me stream and watches me slowly lose my mind from about half past nine onwards because I'm getting tired will know how much of a challenge it is for me to still be up at nearly half past midnight. Must sleep now. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you want to see what else I got up to in Turin, um, then check out my vlog channel in a couple of weeks' time. Keep an eye on my Twitter. I'll let you know where that video is out. The better thing from Turin. But for now, must sleep. Thanks for watching. Bye.